Hi everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and today I'm going to show you how to make sun protection oil. So let me first talk for just a little bit about why you would want to use something like this and then we'll jump right into the recipe. But we actually tested this out last summer. So last summer we did not wear a zinc sunscreen at all, none of us, and we did just fine. So what's the deal with zinc sunscreen? So if you've been with me for a while, you'll know that I have some zinc based sunscreens on my YouTube channel already, recipes for how to make them. But I've recently been learning more about zinc oxide even the non-nano type of zinc oxide and what happens when you use it on your skin. And there's studies out there that show that it is absorbed into your skin, not the same way as the, the nano zinc oxide, but still your skin absorbs it. And the studies are showing that it stays in your tissues for a very long time and that it can lead to different health concerns. So I personally am less comfortable using zinc oxide. I'm not gonna say I would never use it ever again, but definitely just not um, without a lot of thought and care. So in general, we are staying away from zinc oxide on the skin at this time, just based on those things that I've learned. And all last summer, like I said, we did not use it, and instead we used a sun protection oil. So it's not the same as sunscreen, but it has natural SPF from different oils, as well as tallow, and some herbs in there to help with the skin. So it does provide a light protection but our strategy also includes building up a gradual tan, so exposing our skin a little bit, starting earlier in the season so that it builds up a gradual tan without burning. And then also, especially for younger children, but for all of us really, avoiding the times of day when sun is the strongest, so being inside or under shade, and then also using long protective clothing and hats. So we did very well with that. It worked great. Another really important piece to this is protecting skin from the inside out with a very antioxidant rich and fat soluble vitamin rich diet. So if you're following GAPS or Weston A. Price style or Wise Traditions type of diet, then you know that those ways of eating are full of these kinds of nutrients. So think animal fat from pastured animals, fish oil, cod liver oil, all those kinds of things. When your body is very well nourished from the inside, then skin does a lot better and is a lot less likely to burn and we have definitely experienced that as well. And again, this is not scientific or medical advice that I'm giving you, it's just based on what we have experienced and what we've decided to do. Another reason that I'm going this route for us is just from a GAPS diet perspective, Dr. Natasha talks about the benefits of sunbathing and so and how helpful and healthy that is for us for well-being in so many different ways for detox, lots of stuff. And she recommends not using sunscreen on your skin, but instead doing the techniques that I talked about, building up a gradual tan, avoiding the strongest rays, and getting the gentle rays, and doing it that way. So it's worked really well for us. I feel a lot better about it. Again, this is us and what we've decided to do. So what you decide to do is completely up to you and the research that you do. I encourage everybody to research a lot. I will put some information in some links um, links to more information on this whole subject down in the description box if you'd like to check that out for yourself. But um, let's go ahead and jump into making the sun protection oil. I'm going to show you how to make it and that way if it's something that you'd like to try then you can make it. Also there is a purchased option from Earthly Wellness. If you don't want to make it this does basically the same thing as the recipe that I'm about to show you and I'll have a link down below if you'd like to check out this option as well. But we used this quite a bit last summer and it worked really well for us. I feel like it gives skin just that extra layer of protection so it's less likely to burn while we have the other good sun healthy habits in place. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to measure out my different oil ingredients. One of the ingredients is grass-fed tallow. If you don't have tallow on hand or you don't want to re use it for any reason, you can substitute the tallow for more coconut oil. But as many of you know, I love grass-fed tallow for the skin. And so I'm going to be using that in this recipe. So in order to make measuring a lot easier, I am melting my tallow in a little double boiler that I've made on the stove. So it's just a glass pitcher inside a pan of water with a cloth underneath the glass pitcher to prevent any breaking and things like that. So this is just gently heating up and melting the tallow for me so that I'll be able to measure it much more easily. So while that's melting, 
I'm going to measure out the rest of the ingredients. And I also did just want to show you guys what the finished product ends up looking like. So the Earthly Wellness product comes in a tube like this or a thicker stick. So the recipe that I'm making is more like the thicker stick. So I store it in a jar and just take some and use it. But um, it ends up being more like a, an ointment type of a consistency is the best way that I would describe it. So the first thing I'm going to measure out is four tablespoons of organic extra virgin olive oil. Speaking of olive oil, um, if you guys wanted to try this method out but didn't have all the ingredients right away and like you wanted to try this today, if you use just olive oil on your skin, that will give you pretty good results as well. Next I'm going to add four tablespoons of avocado oil. And next I'm going to add four tablespoons of red raspberry seed oil. And I will have links to all of the ingredients that I use linked down below so that you can easily find them and make this yourself. Next I'm going to add two tablespoons of virgin coconut oil. Now you could melt your coconut oil like I am the tallow before measuring it, but mine is soft enough here today that I'm just going to scoop it. The tallow that I'm using is a lot harder at room temperature, so that's why I'm choosing to melt it. So two tablespoons of coconut oil. And then I'm going to add four tablespoons of grass-fed tallow, beef tallow. It could be lamb tallow or by, you know, any of those similar animal would have the same benefits if they were grass-fed. But beef tallow is what I'm using. And then what I'm going to do is actually add this to the double boiler and heat it so that the coconut oil can melt. So you could skip that step, I guess, if you melted the coconut oil ahead of time and then you just combined all of the liquid oils, but this works too. I find that coconut oil melts quite quickly anyway, so it's not a big deal. While that's melting, I'm gonna go ahead and measure out the things that I'm going to need for the next step. So I really like making this and infusing it with different herbs that have wonderful skin benefits. So into a glass mason jar, I like to use a quart jar, a pint sized jar would work as well. I'm going to measure out three different herbs. And you could play around with this. You could experiment with different herbs. You could use only one if you only had one or two. This is what I like to do. So I'm gonna add two tablespoons of chickweed, two tablespoons of comfrey. This is comfrey leaf. And then two tablespoons of calendula flowers. I love these. I put in huge heaping tablespoons. They're so sunny and yellow and just so happy. And they smell nice. And then I'm just waiting for this coconut oil to finish melting in my little pitcher here. And once everything is completely liquid as far as that oil mixture, I'm going to pour the oil mixture onto the herbs and then we're going to start the infusion process. If you didn't have time to do this for whatever reason, you could skip this step and it would still work pretty well, but the herbs just make it even better. Okay, so now that that is all melted, we just pour that over the herbs in the jar. I like to just kind of swirl it around to make sure they're all covered. And then to do the infusion process, you're going to put it in the same kind of a double boiler, just like this, a pan with water with a cloth inside on the stove. You can also do this in a crock pot with the temperature on low. So put the jar in a crock pot, put a cloth in there, put some water in there at least to, to um, go up as far as the level of herbs and oil is. And then you can let it go in there if you're not comfortable with your stove being on for that long but a good infusion time is 12 to 24 hours. You could go longer if you wanted as well, but 12 to 24 hours is usually what I do. And then I have one that's already been infusing for a while, so I'm going to show you the next step, and that is just to strain the herbs out of the oil. So to do that, I just have my metal strainer a funnel sometimes is good. I think I'm okay without it. So I'm just going to pour the mixture in there. And 
And then I usually press it a bit, try to squeeze all the, every last bit of that oil out of the herbs. And then these will just go to the compost now since we've taken a bunch of goodness out of them. And there we go. See, it's a nice, beautiful, dark color when it's got the properties from all those herbs in it. It smells very nice too. It has kind of this warm, herbal, floral kind of a scent to it. It's really nice. And then to store it, it's soft enough. You probably could put it in some type of a, a tube to squeeze it out of, but I have been doing these little glass jars to put it in there and then um, let it solidify at room temperature and it's good to go. So again, this is the consistency that it becomes once it's solidified. You can make it solidify quickly in the freezer if you want to or just let it sit at room temperature. Either one works. And after that, it's ready to use. So the way that we use this is we just take a little bit and we rub it into any exposed skin, so face, arms, whatever skin is exposed, about 10 to 15 minutes before we plan to be outside. And if we're out there for a while, we'll reapply it after two or three hours. And then also if we've been in the water and like rubbing, drying off with a beach towel or something like that, then we'll reapply it again after that. But it has worked really well for us. I was really impressed. And I just feel a lot better about not putting zinc on our skin and absorbing it a whole bunch. So we're definitely gonna be doing this again this summer. I hope that you found that helpful. If you do give it a try, let me know what you think and how you liked it. Also be sure and chime in in the comments below if you have gone zinc free as far as sun protection and how that's worked for you. Share your thoughts down below in the comments. It's a really interesting discussion. Like I said, be sure and check out that description box for links to all of the ingredients that I used to make this so that you can easily find them and make it yourself. I will have the written recipe up on my website, bumblebeeapothecary.com, as soon as I can. I'm working as hard as I can to get the written versions of all of my recipes over on my website, so I'll get that there as soon as I can. I also have some really exciting news. A lot of you have been asking for this. I am publishing a new ebook. So this is a full, complete ebook of all of my skincare, baby, mom and baby, home product recipes. There's over 50 recipes in the ebook and that is gonna be available to purchase. It should be by the time this video goes out. There'll be a link in, down in the description box for you to check that out if you're interested. But I've had a lot of people ask about it because it's really nice to have all the written recipes in one place. Maybe eventually I'll get a written, like published paper, hard copy version out and available. But for now, the ebook version is out there and I hope that you guys really enjoy that. I hope that you guys enjoyed this recipe. If you did like it, give it a thumbs up. Share it with anybody else who you think might find it interesting or helpful. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.